exciting the cars lined up on the grid and it is Adam Colt starting from pole last year he was trying to take on the fight for the title to his teammate Macho Homola but then he came short but this year is this year it seems the tables might be turning as Adam won the opening qualifying and scored the pole position for the opening race of the season Adam joining you on the grid you're back in the Eastern European TCR last year you came short in the fight with your teammate for the title, but now the tables are turning, you're on pole. Uh, the qualification was a bit tricky because of the red flag, uh, but I have the speed and I want to enjoy the race and I hope the result will come by itself. <laughs> Is this the type of track where you can keep everybody behind? Oh, we will see. It's the first race for me here, so um, I can tell you after the race. <laughs> Have fun. Well, now head over to the other side. Local star, local boy. We used to see him in the Suzuki Swift Cup Europe, but he is gaining more and more starts in the TCR world. Attila Bucci. Last year he came to the Czech Republic to Brno to show us what what he's made of and scored a victory. Now he's racing on his home soil, brand new track and he's put his car back on the front row. So, what are your views in front of this race, Attila? Uh, I, I've still got no clue about my race pace, so it's definitely going to be interesting, uh, you know, to see what, what we can do on the second half of the race. Um, I, I won't be surprised if Matteo would have a, a great start, since he's always very good at starting, so... Um, I don't know, I, I'm just hoping that, I, I hope that I will have a better pace than them in the second half of the race. And uh, I don't know, have as many, uh, as uh, minimal tire degradation as possible and that's the key to success. Thank you so much. So those were your front row starters on the outside of the track. And row number two, it is last year's series champion, Matteo Homola. But we have to leave the grid. And uh, because I have to run away, we're going to have a s short switchback. It's not only the Eastern European TCR on the grid, it's also TCR Endurance. And we have the pole sitter right here with us. Thank you so much. That clearly is not me. Enjoy. We start moving because we're doing a driver change also on the grid for the commentator. We're going to be with uh, Eric Briadori, which is one of the drivers who set the pole for the TCR Eastern uh, European Championship here, the maiden race of the series. Eric, which was a driver who had the chance to fight twice for the title in TCR Italy. A young driver, but still with a long experience. A family which a huge experience in races. His father was already racing, running a team that gave you the chance. We just crossing the pit lane then finally you will start talking us about the series which is uh, gonna be well at a very huge challenge here because we're gonna have a two hour race for the first hour today then uh, there will be a cut at the end of the 55 minutes plus one lap so first of all eric welcome to this championship at tell us how was qualifying for you and uh, how is this track thank you hi everyone yeah uh, first race of the season new brand new season and new championship for us uh, this year uh, new team also so everything is new for me also the track on this weekend but yeah until now everything is going uh, is going on well so uh, my my teammate turgos is on is on the car now he will make the the first part of the of, of the race and yeah we will see thank you so much eric we will see you in the second part of the race and now guys enjoy this race
we are now on the formation lap, cars already onto the track and getting their tyres and brakes and everything ready. Well, warm up their machines, cool down their heads I would say. And we've got Adam Colt, last year's third driver overall in the standings, now sitting on pole position. Red flag session earlier on this morning that handed him the pole position, but he's definitely fast and he will definitely fight for that victory. He scored one last season, he will want to add many more this year. Alongside him though, Attila Bucci, who showed us his speed last year, and he's coming back for more on his home soil. Matteo Homola, last year's champion, uh, on the second row, uh, road, uh, row, sorry, joined by Giacomo Germandi, who switched marks, switched brands, and he's now at the wheel of the brand new Honda Civic. Behind him, the earlier Civic models in the hands of uh, Mertl Motorsport guys. René Kircher, second guy overall from last year in B5. Alongside him, David Kajaya in B6. Martin Karlecik, last year's Clio Cup dominant champion, switching over to DCR with Aditis Racing and the current Audi RS3 sitting seventh on the grid. Alongside him, Petr Cizek waiting for his first uh, Eastern European TCR victory. Jarko Knego from Croatia in ninth and alongside him Vitz Mekal with the second Express Auto Racing Cupra. Jiří Spozinek making a switch from Clio to DCR World in the hands of Yannick Motorsport guys uh, with the Hyundai Elantra alongside him Faranjo Dubreta and Ivar Zvalers and Jordan Doliška and then we've also got the grid of the guys doing the endurance race so pairings of uh, Konu Koglu and Briliadori uh, Pinar and Özen, uh, Katsan and Okiai and Barkovic Takac. But the green flag is already up in the air, which means that we are ready to do the start in the Formula 1 style fashion. The red lights are off and we are racing in Hungary. Adam Kod from pole position seems to be having a slow start. So it is Attila Bucci already leading, but pushing Maggio Homola onto the grass, coming into the first corner. This is going to be a massive fight. And there's also a fight for third between Germandi and one of the Metal Motorsport Hondas having contact in the first corner already. But they are through. Adam Kod dropping it all the way down to six. Terrible start from the Czech driver and he is going to have to do it all on the track and catch up all the lost places Mertl Motorsport Hondas fighting each other in the end of the last sector and there's also Petr Cizek up into seventh having done uh, short work of uh, Martin Karlecik as it seems but it is Attila Bucci leading on his home track in front of last year's champion Matteo Homola from Giacomo Germandi in third then it is one of the Mertl Motorsport Hondas seem to be uh, René Kircher trying it down the inside the car number eight behind him Adam Colt who's already made it past David Kajaya so he's made one place but having started from pole he is now all the way down to fifth Petr Cizek in seventh from uh, it seems like Jarko Kniego in his brand new liveried Hyundai Elantra which means that Martin Karlecik must have dropped his Audi all the way somewhere to, towards the back end of the top 10 we're waiting for him to come to view as well and there is Adam Code piling on pressure on René Kircher this is the fight for fourth and Adam Code forcing Kircher into a mistake having a switch back but he's now finding himself on the outside of the last chicane and he's had to slow down a little bit which now opens the door for David Kajaya to attack once again and is Petr Cizek also going to try and come through as he slips streaming past but this is Giacomo Germandi making the launch on Maggio Homola in the fight for second as Maggio was trying to line himself up on the attack for the attack on Attila Bucci Bucci still leading from Homola and Germandi Mertl fourth Code fifth then we have David Kajaya in sixth and no change there and Petr Cizek lost a place to Jarko Knego currently in the fight for seventh. Ivar Svalers up to ninth, Vitex Mekal in tenth and uh, some terrible, terrible luck for Martin Karlecik who is all the way down somewhere in 17th. Did we have him even on the start or what happened there because we do not have him there uh, around the 10th place, or sorry, around the 7th place and even in the top 10 where he started. A 
and it seems like even good progress was made by the by the endurance guys because we've got one of the cars all the way up to 12. Yes, it's a Konokoglu who managed to do a great start actually in the first part of the of the race with Pinar trying to attack the other Audi RS3 LMS car, but in the end the team Texaco team AMS finally starting to uh, do some inroads actually overtaking a couple of the cars of the Eastern Europe guys and also great stuff by the Cupra Leon of Zille Motorsport with Barkovic going up into third place. Back to front, this is uh, René Kircher coming under pressure from Adam Colt to Paul Sitter, the hungry Paul Sitter. You'll of course notice that the time counter says 56 minutes yes the first 25 minutes will be done with the eastern european dcr guys as well then they're going to finish their race and leave the endurance to finish but now it is adam Colt who is finally through on rene kircher after two laps so he prepared everything on the on the first lap and now he's made the move stick and uh, he's up to fourth and he can start actually to catch up with the leaders who have already gone a little bit into the distance three seconds between uh, Adam Colt and Giacomo Germandi, so some time to be, to be one back. Petr Cizek also trying to have some of that for himself, attacking David Kajaya, slight touch between the two. As we are heading towards the back part of the track through the quick right-hander into the chicane, Petr Cizek trying to look if he can line up for another move. Through the chicane they go and around the hairpin with Jarko Knigo in the rears, followed by Franjo Dubreta in his Cupra Leon and Vitek Smekal in P10 Martin Karlecik. So we do have him there, lifetiming starting to show him, but only in P11, so that was not a particularly good start by last year's Clio champion, but this is the first race of his TCR career, so uh, yeah, we need to give him time, definitely, it's, it's a big difference, the car definitely holding in the corners, way better than the Clio's, even the suspension, way more sophisticated, so the cornering speed you, you have to get used to, definitely way higher, but Martin Karlecik has been doing a great job across his first weekend in the Eastern European TCR, and uh, not really. Uh, too far away from uh, the top spots but of course he's had a lot to do in this race and he's already up to 10th he's just made a move on Vitex Meikal so Martin Karlecik back into the uh, into top 10 Ivars Valers down in 12th and uh, Jirkas Bozinek down in 17th in his Elantra of course another uh, another difficult debut from one of the one of the youngsters coming through the ranks from the Renault Clio Cup. Yes, a good start from Kadrecik actually, who is also part of the TCR European Endurance Grid, currently in second place in in that championship with Attila Bucci actually being in P1. So currently leading both races, of course, his main event being TCR Eastern Europe, and now coming under pressure from Homola, who looks like has some great pace, especially in sector two. Attila Bucci, six tenths ahead of Matteo Homola that was across the line entering this lap now you can basically see that gap for yourself Matteo Homola trying to put more pressure this is that sort of waiting period of course 25 minutes that's the that's the length of the so to say sprint race of the Eastern European TCR and uh, even though some other uh, some other cars have to go away longer than the Eastern European guys, or well, let's say TCR guys. Um, uh, still, you've got to think about your tyres, not to destroy them too soon. It'll be front limited track here, and uh, yeah, Attila Bucci trying to hold on to it, trying to manage gr uh, good speed. And uh, Matteo Homola slightly piling the pressure on. You, you see his experience, you see that he doesn't need to attack, he doesn't need to go aggressive in every single corner. He's just building that base, he's just conserving tyres, waiting for a good opportunity to arise. Now we are running down the back straight behind the main grandstand. Lots of spectators, of course, choosing to stand at the very top of it to have great view not only of the pits and the start and finish straight, but also this 
uh, straight that is parallel to start and finish and at the end of it one of the great overtaking spots on the circuit Attila Bucci leading Matteo Homola carefully and patiently staying second behind them it is Germande in third and Adam Colt catching up Adam Colt definitely catching up if we check the times on the previous lap 144.5 done by Colt Germandi 144.7 and the fastest lap of the race actually by Matteo Homola in 144.4 it's a really interesting first part of the race because of course more experienced drivers as you said are waiting for the right moment to attack and kind of conserving the tires and especially for example Homola trying to see where Butch is vulnerable so trying to see maybe a couple of his lines seeing perhaps some weaknesses in turn one for example or like in the chicane so trying to see where he could attack and where perhaps the overtake could come and put the pressure on and maybe even force Attila into locking up the tires a couple of times which of course would then take away from their lifetime this is David Kajaya still under pressure from Petr Cizek and this is Jerzy Spozinek, Jerka Spozinek, car number 11 trying to make way from 17th where he dropped at the start of the race and this is an opportunity for us also to look further down the field this should now be a fight with Jordan Dolishka. Austrian girl joining the grid for the Eastern European campaign as well here in Hungary. Yeah, and right behind them the fight between Pinar and Barkovic in the TCR European Endurance with the latter trying a move uh, with his Cobra Leon car with the Red Bull River really, actually really nice seeing those colors here in TCR European Endurance as well and so another great fight between the two with the images of course trying to see all of the grid with the beautiful drone camera right on the back straight here towards the second sector with many cars trying to see and trying to take different lines Oh there's one of Elantras, one of Yannick Motorsport Elantra stopped on the track or stopped right next to it there was a problem for someone and I just wanted to say that oh and that is Irkas Bozinek in the gravel so he made a mistake under braking presumably into that very difficult turn 5 and he seems to have beached his car at least by the front axle and trying to reverse back onto the track not really sure if he can still do that we also had Martin Karlacik skipping one of the chicanes but now he's, well, he's still ninth this is the fight for the lead and we definitely saw Jirka Spozinek in trouble let's see if he gets out of that because if not it might actually trigger a safety car it's a real shame for him because he was trying to make some inroads as well as a couple of other cars that we see from the drone camera but so far Butch and Homola being the class of the field actually three seconds over Giacomo Germandi in third place and of course Homola trying to see where Butch could be overtaken but the Hungarians so far doing a great job in P1 but let's not forget about Adam Cole the pole sitter who's currently the fastest man on track he set another lap time two laps back 144.1 actually so he was multiple tenths per lap faster than everyone else and uh, also the previous lap he was already half a second faster uh, sorry slower than his uh, than his best uh, achievement but he still did 144.6 while for example Germandi right in front of him 145.3 so there was even what was it, it was a nine tenth difference between uh, sorry seven tenth difference between the two and uh, further up ahead Homola 144.7 Bucci 144.9 we've got lots of yellow flags and safety car is out it seems that safety car is out i do see at least on one of the marshalling posts now more of them still uh taking out the sc boards which means that the safety car is coming out onto the track and that will get the entire race neutralized all the gap will disappear and so we'll see if homala can actually attack Bokuchi after the safety car period with now the safety car waiting for the guys before turn one but this could actually be really good for uh, the guys from P3 downwards yeah. because they can actually gain back those three seconds that Butch and Homola had on them and perhaps with perhaps fresher tires or just a better understanding of the track could actually fight for the win. This is effectively bringing Adam Code back into the game for the victory 
having made a terrible, terrible start. We're going to have to talk to him what happened. If there were any clutch issues or simply late start, late reaction, we'll see. But uh, Adam Gold has caught up with uh, Giacomo Germandi. He's trying to get past. We, of course, know that Germandi is a difficult driver to get by. He's a, he's a ruthless driver. I don't want to say ruthless, but I mean, I mean aggressive driver. And, uh, yeah, he's definitely having his elbows out and not giving any place for free. So Adam Gould will have to take that into consideration in that respective fight. But he, well, Germande is the one now blocking him from that view of the fight for the race victory. And this is their teammate, new teammate, Irkas Bozinek, replacing Polish driver Karlo Czepiel who drove for Janik Motorsport team last season. Now it is Jiris Bozinek, who has dropped the car under brakes now into the gravel. And uh, as he did not manage to get back on track, uh, he's going to have to use some help from the track marshal. So the race has effectively ended for the Czech youngster. Fortunately, not anywhere in the barrier. And let's not forget that this safety car will actually bunch things up for TCI European Endurance as well. Of course, Bucci being in P1 at the moment with Martin Kadlecik, not only being P8 overall, but of course P2 in the TCI European Endurance standings. But the fight for the podium is still pretty much alive with Konokoglu and Pinar fighting for that third spot. But let's not forget, of course, the Zille Motorsport car of Barkovic and later Takac, who will be in the car after the pit stop phase. They are fighting for the podium at the moment with the car with the Red Bull livery trying to finish on the podium. So, tow-away activities currently underway. <coughs> Some more instructions to, to the driver, what to do, what not to do and how to get out so that we can resume the race as soon as possible. We've got 45 minutes left on the clock, which means that we've already used up 15 minutes of the Eastern European TCR time. That means 10 minutes left until the end of that particular race. And we've already done seven laps in the meantime, with uh, Attila Bucci leading from second on the grid. As he made a good move, basically great start, and uh, already after a couple of meters, he was leading the race just as Adam Colt uh, messed up his own start and now he's playing catch-up. Matthew Homola up into second from Germandi. There they are, to the rest of the pack. Colt fourth, René Kircher in fifth from uh, David Kajaya in sixth. Petr Cizek, B7, Martin Karlecik already up to eighth. Jarko Knego behind him in P9. And Faranjo Dubreta completing the top 10 for the moment with Vitz Mekal right behind in 11th. And you were talking with Attila actually before the start of the race and he was unsure about his pace. Well, I think he will be pretty satisfied with it and with himself as well in the first part of the race. But it will be very interesting after the safety car period, of course, the TCR Eastern Europe guys not having much time left in their race. And so it will be very interesting to see how Attila actually manages the restart. Things will go impatient, things will go aggressive probably, but we also know that Matthew Homo, last year's champion, he is very experienced and he will probably not get dragged into any overly aggressive moves. Irkas Bozinek out of the trouble, so he's allowed to drive back, but only to the pits as he's uh, as he's used the external assistance, he cannot continue in the race, so he can get back to pits so that we don't lose much more time and uh, the car get, gets back to, his, uh, to its mechanics as soon as possible but that will be it for the Czech driver Attila Bucci, yeah, very quick in quali just like last year in Brno, uh, questioning his own race pace, of course, because to manage the tyres across the 25-minute race is a little different discipline than uh, trying to go quick for one lap. And uh, Matthew Homola knows that incredibly well. He's also helped um, with the GT programme earlier on. 
and he may be even entered into the endurance race later on but now he's got a TCR fight on his hands and we are about to restart the race with Jirka Spozhnik coming back to the pits and retiring the car the safety car has its lights off already making its way back to the pits and we are about to restart the TCR race here in Balaton in just a couple of seconds everybody awaiting the cars back on the start and finish straight impatiently and is the local driver the local young hero Attila Bucci he's going to choose the moment and it comes now Attila Bucci restarting the TCR race here in front of the home crowd from Maciu Homola and Giancomo Germandi Adam Colt immediately under pressure from Rene Kircher Germandi making a move on Homola there's touch there's touch Homola. oh and there's big contact between Kachaya and Jarko Knego both of them ending up in the gravel of the first corner and this might bring the safety car right back just as we restarted the race this was a big one Attila Bucci leading from Homola who is tagged in the first corner then having to correct the beginning slide which he did but he skipped across the runoff area next to the first corner but then after well behind them this happened and David Kijaya and Jarko Knego are out of this race on the spot dramatic moments at the restart and this will neutralize the race once again which is now continuing still b b by the end uh, by the time we get back to the start and finish straight so Bucci leading from Homola and Germande Adam Code fourth Rene Kircher in fifth and then we've lost Kajaya and uh, Knego who must have completely missed his breaking spot and collected David Kajaya who wasn't even in the fight with him because Kajaya had Petr Cizek right behind and also Martin Karlecik so uh, Jarko Knego must have simply come out of nowhere it's a real shame for both of them with Kajaya actually trying to move up the grid but Knego of course missing the breaking point and actually red flag. we've got a red flag okay wasn't really expecting that this would be I would still say a safety car safety car affair but that would probably have caused another lengthy safety car period which would effectively end it any chances for any changes in the TCR Eastern European race this basically gives us the opportunity to continue with that race because we are stopping it on the track let's see that Ooh, that was a big one Jarko Knego literally came out of nowhere because I was actually looking into the first corner to the exit where I saw I was trying to see how that tag between Germandi and uh, Homola would play out because I saw uh, Homola in the full opposite lock trying to correct that slide and uh, he was through that basically getting himself off the track into the runoff area and uh, out of nowhere then came Jarko Kniego I absolutely didn't see him coming suddenly like a, you know um, big white smudge appeared on the on the right side of our screen and we just saw that big hit which was a really big one hope uh, uh, well happy to see both drivers stepping out of their cars and walking away uh, and there you see the reaction just Kajaya not happy with him yeah what the heck was that it's a real shame because Kajaya was looking to be pretty quick and of course he he did not see Knego coming of course in into turn one but both drivers out of the race and with the race stopped we see the timer blocked at 40 minutes and 17 seconds left so the TCR Eastern Europe guys will have roughly five minutes to go in their race so I think there will be plenty of action with it once the restart comes let's see let's see let's hope nothing as aggressive and as unfortunate as we've just witnessed we would like to see eventful last five minutes of the Eastern European race first race of the season actually and uh, on your right hand side you'll see also the GT cars being driven out of Parc Ferme after their race through the pits but um, the two cars beached in the gravel and of course they will probably be impossible to simply drive out or drag out uh, definitely not under their power but that was a pretty big hit wheel on wheel 
front axle on front axle and this might cause significant damage inside the cars because of course these are front wheel driven cars so you've got your you've got your differential you've got the gearbox you've got the engine you've got everything you know all the all the power coming through the front wheels and uh, that was a significant hit so let's see what kind of damage this causes and if the cars well how much how severely damaged they are and if they can even enter tomorrow's races yeah exactly with tomorrow's race at uh, scheduled at 10:20 am of course local time but this red flag gives us some time to see how things are panning out in the tcr european endurance with attila bucci in p1 at the moment with martin kadlicic following closely behind in second place and the fight for the podium is very much alive with konokoglu as so far defending third place for texaco team ams with pinar in fourth place and zile motorsport with their cupra leon car currently in fifth position with zoltan barkovic trying his hardest to fight for the podium but let's not forget about Seda Kachan a female driver who looks to be really competitive around here today mm -hmm. so far in sixth place with the other Texaco AMS car and so we'll see of course once the TCR Eastern Europe cars go back into the pit lane how the situation will pan out but of course we're expecting some great fights they are pretty bunched up together especially Konokoglu, Pinar and Barkovic they were separated by like a second and a second and a half throughout the first 20 minutes of racing so we're expecting some great fights between them as well and of course now watching the TCR European Endurance car with a Zilla Motorsport recognizable by the Red Bull Rivery of course really nice to see those colors here today and just in front of them Pinar uh, in the Texaco team AMS Gen 1 car of course the TCR European Endurance giving the chance to those models built before 2018 to race competitively uh, around tracks such as the Balaton Park circuit. I actually had a chance to talk to uh, Gilles Motorsport members yesterday and uh, admired delivery myself because yeah those are the typical iconic red bull uh, red bull colors uh, which i was really happy to see back in 2016 at formula one turning matte because that's what you want that Such just a cool look brings well. out the color properly uh, with you know mostly the cars usually being covered in in uh, in glossy colors but if you actually go matte it just gives it a particular look and uh, yeah in my mind that's just that's just the best it pops out <laughs> more as well yeah sure and it's actually uh, if you've ever been to a motorsport or you know to a motor race personally uh, you'll notice that most of the colors are actually really incredibly bright uh, because it, it you know the cameras always sort of um, absorb some of that so in order for the colors to be really nicely visible you really have to go extremely sort of high vis in uh, in in the real world uh, that they are noticeable on the cameras for example even if you look at the Anik motorsport cars they have uh, recognizable red highlights but if you come to the track itself they're, they're, they're shining like crazy because you're really using that that um, um, but shiny type of color I would say yeah definitely the matte finish that gives it a great look actually especially on the Cupra car which is a really beautiful car in itself but with the Red Bull River it kind of pops out a lot more especially in this kind of field with we we'll see the recovery of one of the two cars the number, number 74 car of Zarko Knego getting rescued by the marshals so far doing a great job in, to try and of course clear the track in order for us to get back racing and we're even trying to examine a little bit the extent of damage on Kajaya's car maybe if we have a chance to zoom in on that car a little bit more uh, we might see what uh, what kind of damage there is to the front axle and uh, not only not only Knego but also David Kajaya's car that was actually standing there so we see yeah this is actually basically if you're introducing a new model and you don't want your competition to spy on you you, you, you give it like a camo livery which is what the uh, yeah uh, TCR Dubrovnik um, the Croatian team's livery always very creative with their liveries so that's what the livery reminds me of that sort of camo uh, because with that with all the black and white stripes you can't really tell how much the car is damaged but on the other hand on the other side of the barrier now uh, it was way more visible, way more obvious on the Mertel Motorsport Honda and uh, that 
destruction of the front axle was absolutely evident on the Honda. So, um, well, fingers crossed that uh, the Metal Motorsport guys can make it ready until tomorrow. They have some time, but that will also depend on the extent of the damage, just as Jacob Nico's car is now being put on the flatbed. Yeah, and it will be very interesting to see if both of them can make the the race tomorrow, but this is the replay, of course. Yeah, it seems like... He just misses his braking point, didn't he? Very, very weird, because, yeah, he's presumably missed the braking point, and in order not to crash to the car right in front of himself, he just swayed away, but swerved the car, jinked to the right, and then he was, you know, on a on a destruction journey already. And once you've committed, there's there's nothing you can do about it. There's no getting out of that. And you're just hoping it won't be a big one. But of course, at the same time, you're realizing it will be a big one because there's just nowhere to go. There's cars everywhere. It's right at the restart. There's no gaps. Everyone's running right behind each other. And uh, you'd be extremely lucky if you just go through the pack and not hit anyone. And of course, being a safety car restart, it was almost impossible to yeah. find a gap, not exactly. to hit any car. And he did well to actually avoid both Cizek and I think it was Kadlicek behind him. Uh -huh. But unfortunately, of course, Kajaya was on a collision course with him and there was nothing that both drivers could do at that point in time. So we'll be restarting in one minute. But the Cizek may have been remembered of a similar situation a couple of years back in Slovakia, where he was actually terribly hit from behind by Giacomo Germandi and uh, that effect was he was racing a full in race academy cooper back then so uh, same model that he's driving now and uh, that car was basically shortened by a good meter by that hit so uh, it's really good good job that uh, if anything jarko managed to avoid him but of course uh, unfortunately it had to be someone in that situation and uh, the bad luck fell on to david kajaya today yeah, and of course now the safety car leading the whole pack and it will be very interesting to see how Attila Bucci now uh, takes things on because of course it's one thing to lead the race, it's another thing to lead a safety car restart, yeah. it's yet another thing to lead a red flag restart which is of course a safety car restart but with a lot of time paused before that so it will be very inter interesting mentally wise to see how Bucci can fight off Homola with of course much more experience in the car and, and not the only series. The, sorry, sorry, and not only the pause but of course also the fact that you've been sat on the grid for so long which means all the temperatures from the tires and brakes are gone you now have to rebuild them over the course of hopefully one lap and uh, yeah so we're going to be again prone to a similar accident that we just saw between Kniego and the Kajaya just, which is hoping that everybody does a good job in uh, getting their tires and brakes ready, which doesn't seem to be the case right now. Bucci is weaving across the, the track, of course, to bring some heat into his front tires. He doesn't want to do that too much, of course, because we are now closing towards the end of the race, which means that the tires are past their best. And uh, they do not want to overheat them too much. They do not want to lock them up. Uh, but even the safety car seems to be running rather slowly because it seems to me that the entire grid is quite stretched apart so uh, yeah the last cars are quite far apart from uh, the top of the pack so we'll see the time is going again of course so this is already counting towards the race distance and towards the race time itself and uh, the safety car should get back to the bits right after uh, this lap or at the end of this lap and we will be racing again with Attila Bucci leading He's got to hold his nerves in, uh, well, in place. And we should have round about, what time for round about, what, two laps, effectively. Yeah, it's either one or two laps for the TCR Eastern Europe guys with Bucci and Homola leading the pack, of course. Then we'll go on with the TCR European Endurance and seeing that action unfold after the 35-minute mark on the screen that we see. And, of course, it will be very interesting to see now how Homola actually tries to do things of course do you go for p1 do you try to go for glory right immediately from the first race or do you just hold back 
maybe let this one go but still secure a second place which would be incredibly helpful for him in the championship. So there we go, Matilda Bucci leading us off and he's, he's gone on the throttle way sooner than uh, previously, he's trying to, you know, break the entire pack which he's done and he's even found that moment of surprise over Matteo Homola so he's covering himself off, nice job by Attila Bucci into the first corner but Matteo Homola very experienced, he's already behind and back on his tail but look at the gaps in the field which are effectively hopefully preventing the same scenario as we just saw at the first restart Attila Bucci leading the way we're on what seems to be the penultimate lap of the race from Matteo Homola then there's a bit of a gap to third place Giacomo Germande, Adam Coates still under pressure from René Kircher, second placed guy overall in last year's standings, fighting with third placed man overall. And uh, there they are, Giacomo Germande making a big mistake into turn five, going late on the brakes and now he has served himself on a silver plate to Adam Colt. What is Adam going to do about it? First chance coming here into the chicane, but Adam tries to stay patient, but he's going around the outside. He's going to try a switchback and prepare a chance into the hairpin. Another switchback maybe, and Germandi glued to the inside line. There's touch from behind. René Kircher waiting for his chance to come up. And uh, we are now going to run down the back straight into another chicane. This is going to be a big one. This is going to be a big chance for Adam Colt. Giacomo Germandi, what is he going to do under brakes? Adam Colt looking down the inside. And he's now sending Germandi off the track, forced him into the mistake. Kircher is close. What is Germandi going to do? He's now skipping across the gravel and this is handing third place to Adam Colt. Nice job, mentally needs to be said. Nice game from Adam Colt who's forced Germandi into a mistake. The Italian driver went through the gravel and basically handed the third place over to the Czech racer who having started from pole is now at least back on the podium on the final lap, what must be the final lap. Uh, okay, but we've also reduced the overall distance. Yeah, well, by, say, five, sorry, by overall, five minutes it looks like. Yeah. 30 minutes left on the clock. And there's yellow flags, one of the endurance cars, one of the Audis in the gravel. So yellow flags are back out and that's in the last sector. So if there is still any chance to fight for anything in this race, it has to be done now into the chicane, into the hairpin, because towards the back end, towards that last sector, there are going to be yellow flags preventing any further action. This is Martin Karlacic behind Petr Cizek in their fight for six, behind Germandi. Is anything going to happen here? Because this might effectively be their last chance to do something about their positions. Martin Karlecik having a tiny look, but of course rather trying to play it safe on debut, not to make any silly mistake. Yeah, just to tell you guys, the, the, the yellow flag is because of the number three car in the TCR European Endurance of Barkin Pinar, who's out on the, on the gravel and trying to restart right now. There we go. Yeah, time elapsed, 25 minutes, 50 seconds. So effectively, effectively this is it for the DCR Eastern Europe, which means that Attila Bucci is now coming home to score victory in the opening race of the season. Attila Bucci victorious on home soil here at Balaton Park. First race on the track. Matteo Homola coming home second. Adam Cote third from René Kircher. Giacomo Germande in fifth from Petr Cizek, Martin Karlecik, Vitz Meikal, Ivar Svalers, but now we also have Franjo Dubreta jumping up to eighth. So there was a tiny little glitch in the live timing. But the drivers of the Eastern European TCR were told not to drive too slowly on the final lap in which they are heading back to the pits because the rest of the guys keep on racing. Yep, with TCI European Endurance now starting its second part of the race with a great move by Zoltan Barkovic actually in the first, uh, actually in the second restart from the safety car overtaking both Pinar and Kachan, so trying to fight for the podium with Konukoglu not too far ahead, looks like a 4.2 second gap between 
the two cars with Attila Bucci, of course, winning the TCR Eastern Europe race and we'll see now uh, his race in the TCR European Endurance how it unfolds. So at the end of this lap, the track is going to feel a little abandoned. There's still guys to, to keep on racing and uh, we're effectively now waiting for the Eastern European TCR drivers to return back to the pits. There's Attila Bucci, victorious in the Eastern European race, as you've just said. And uh, he's done it again. He scored a dominant victory last year in Brno. And uh, this season, we can only wait. Yeah, and as you can see there, the Red Bull livery car, livery car of Zoltan Barkovic in the Cupra trying to go in front. But this is yeah. Konu Koglu in the Texaco Team AMS car going forward to start lap number 13 with the Cupra right behind him. Looks like a 3.3 second gap between the two. And then, of course, the other Texaco Team, M team AMS car of Pinar in uh, third place now with Attila Bucci. Looks like he's going back to the pit lane uh, to perhaps um, preserve the car for the second race starting tomorrow in the TCR Eastern Europe after a great win today. So this is now the race splitting and uh, yeah, with Konu Koglu now uh, in the car uh, of course the pit stop phase will now likely start with the Audi RS3 that is currently leading the overall standings in TCR European Endurance likely to get back to the pit to change driver and a minimum of two tires with of course the pair of Konu Koglu and Brigliadori leading so far and here you can see the number three car uh, that is unfortunately beached in the gravel that is Barkin and Pinar brings and out the safety car currently third safety car of the race Amazing. a really eventful race yeah that. yeah and this, this will bunch up the grid pretty nicely, of course. Uh, unfortunately, the number three car looks to be out of the race. A real shame for the Texaco team AMS car with Pinar that was supposed to give Zekai Ozen the car in the second half of the race, the junior driver who could have fought for that, uh, for that win right there. But unfortunately, the safety car means that they're out of the race and, of course, bunches the grid up. And we could see a great fight between, so far, the two. Uh, main protagonists of the race, which were Konu Koglu and Barkovic. So let's just hope that uh, there are cars left for the rest of the race. Unfortunately, one of them beached uh, there at the side of the track. And uh, with the safety car, I'm just going to say that this is it for the DCR Eastern European part of the race. We'll be back with more, of course, back for more tomorrow at 10.20, where again, the two grids will join uh, for a common race. And uh, that will be again another beautiful fight definitely in uh, the season that has just started for the Eastern European TCR so um, uh, thank you Daniele with that I'm gonna leave you to it uh, and uh, we're gonna be ready after the lunch break let's see if we have anything left out of that after all the delays we've had this uh, what well, day so far but after the lunch break we'll be back with the uh, first race of the Formula 4 the Central European Formula 4 and then a little later on second race of the Suzuki Swift Cup and then of course the endurance race later on today. Yep, thank you Pavel and we'll be right back with the live images of course the number three car uh, now rescued from the tow truck trying to get back underway but it looks like it will be hard for the number three car to be back uh, out there with the compatriots right there so far in the race. Of course, Turguk Konukoglu so far leading things off in the TCR European Endurance with the number two car, Texaco Team AMS fielding three cars this weekend uh, and the Turkish driver who is now leading the pack with the white, red and orange livery now under attack likely when the safety car will go back into the pit lane from the Zille Motorsport car the Hungarian team of course in their home race racing with the Cupra Leon TCR DSG car of course fighting for the DSG win as well with Zoltan Barkovic in the car right now the former Suzuki Swift Cup Hungary champion of course a lot of experience for him in national one make series when now will be back underway he will try and overtake Konukoglu perhaps before 
the pit stop window with the safety car now bunching things up for TCR European Endurance and will be a very exciting restart actually uh, now to see and watch in real time of course the car now beached right there in the gravel with the safety car so far out uh, and of course there will be a couple more laps before the safety car uh, will go back to the pit lane and so of course the pit stop window has been postponed we're now starting lap number 15 with Kono Koglu still in the lead of course and it will be very interesting to see how things pan out and as, as we saw actually from the images the number 4 car is now in the pit lane to perform that driver change and so Said Lakachan will now likely switch to Ibrahim Okiai the 54 year old currently enrolled in the gentleman class as well so fighting for that title there too Okiai will likely take the place of the Turkish driver there it is, number four car in the pit lane with Texaco Team AMS changing the front tires. Of course, there is a minimum of two tires to be changed during the pit stop phase as well as the driver. And so the number four car electing to do their pit stop during the safety car window, which could potentially help them quite a lot. Of course, it will see, we will see if the other Texaco Team AMS car will answer right away with the number two car now currently in the lead but of course under threat from their fellow Audi of Kachan and Okiai with the Cupra of Barkovic and Tokac following the number three car in second place we'll see now the number four Audi ready to get back underway with the team AMS car ready to fight for a podium finish with now 20 minutes and 55 seconds on the clock still a third of the race to go roughly of course this only being stage one of the opening round of the season we will have stage two tomorrow together with TCR Eastern Europe as well and here you can see the number four car finally getting on the way ready to disengage the pit limiter and resume racing to try and catch the pack as quickly as possible with Ibrahim Okiai now in the car with a safety car now rounding out yet another lap starting lap number 16 with Konukoglu and Brigliadori who are likely uh, starting to think about their pit stop with the Texaco team AMS car splitting the strategies and therefore having the number four car pit before the leaders and here you can see the two other cars that were in first and second place pit extremely quickly reacting to the choice made by Kachan and Okiai with Konokoglu being the former leader of the race now switching to Eric Brigliadori the quickest driver that we had in qualifying and here you can see the number four car trying to rush the outlap phase and here you can see Eric Brigliadori helping his teammate out of the car and of course vice versa with Konu Koglu helping Brigliadori strap in the car and getting ready maybe giving him a couple of tips on how the car is reacting on this first ever race of the TCR European Endurance the Audi RS3 LMS car with a sequential gearbox being the car of choice for the number two entry change of both the right and the left front tires with the mechanics of course two mechanics per car plus one lo lollipop man allowed per team with Riyadori and Konokoglu ready to get things back on the way there's also the Zille motorsport car of Barkovic and Takac in the pit lane with the latter ready to get back on the way here is Riyadori ready to start the car now back on ground level with a safety car waiting for them into turn one it will be very interesting to see who the leader will be after this pit stop phase with the number four car now rounding out the final turn turn number 16 now going past and so it will be Ibrahim Okiai who takes the lead of the race with Kuan Koglu leaving the number two car to Brigliadori it will be very interesting to see if Takac in the Cupra Leon car will be able to jump Briadori in the pits but as you can see the number four car is now the lead the leader of the race with Ibrahim Okiai behind the wheel and the 54 year old is now the man to beat as we now see Briadori get back out there 
from the pits in front of the number 60 car of Balaj Takac who is now trying to get back towards the technical team AMS car now in third place overall and of course trying to fight for the podium and not only the podium but the win of course Barkovic and Tokac fighting in the DSG category as well reserved to cars with the DSG gearbox together with Kachan and Okiai who are now the leaders of not only the DSG class but the overall standings as well Roughly 17 minutes to go in this part one of the opening race of the season for the TCR European Endurance. A freshly made series that will travel around Europe for four different races. Of course, round one here at Balaton Park Circuit before a double header in Italy. Of course, the lovely Vallelunga Circuit hosting round two on the 19th of May. And then Misano will have the TCR European Endurance cars ready for a lovely night race on the 21st of June before going in the summer for the final round in around the Slovakia ring on the 25th of August here is the latter of the two cars involved in the previous crash that resulted in a red flag with the number 74 of Zakok Nego getting back to the pit lane together with David Kajaya but the attention now is on the TCI European Endurance grid with Okiai and Brigadori ready to fight as the safety car turns its lights off and so we're ready to get back on the way here with 60 minutes and 9 seconds to go in this first part of the opening race of the TCI European Endurance season as Okiai gives the green flag right now and he starts going towards turn one but there is immediately Eric Brigliadori trying to get the move done towards the opening corner of the circuit great move from Brigliadori who wastes absolutely no time to get into P1 and so the Texaco team AMS cars trying to build a nice gap towards Takac in third place we can see there from the drone camera in third position with the Hungarian trying to close things up not only in the overall standings but in the DSG class as well with now which now sees Okiai in second place. Briadori then trying to build a nice gap on his teammate of course Briadori being the quickest driver in qualifying with a 1 minute 44.2 Briadori Born in 2000, a 23 year old from Cesena, who is a really experienced driver actually, despite his young age, in the TCR category, fought for the TCR Italy title in both 2020 and 2021, winning the under 25 category there on both occasions. And as you can see now, his great pace starting to show immediately after the first few laps from the safety car. Of course, catching the safety car up on the final lap meant that Brigliadori had fresher and, of course, tires that were in temperature compared to his rival with Ibrahim Okiai having to settle so far for a second position and here you can see Brigliadori trying to maximize this advantage early on in the latter part of the first stage and here you can see the Cupra of Zoltan Markovic and Balaz Takac the latter trying to get back to second position the Cupra taking advantage of the first safety car period getting a couple of, of moves done on the number four and the number three car the latter being unfortunately out of the race with Barkin Pinar beaching the car on the final few turns of this lovely 4.1 kilometer circuit 30 minutes and 53 seconds to go in this opening round of the TCR European Endurance part one being 60 minutes long and then of course another 60 minute stage tomorrow at 10 20 a.m local time we'll see the first winners official winners of the tcr european endurance be declared a race that now sees eric briadori in first position of course the young italian being the man to beat in qualifying he's so far confirming his favorite status and of course, Ibrahim Okiai trying to follow closely behind. As right now we can see the number two car of Briadori going 
towards the back straight, of course, getting out of the hairpin into turn 10. A lovely image from the drone that helps us see, see the top three cars with Okiai and Takach closely behind with the latter trying to get to make some inroads actually on the Turkish driver and he was not able to do so in the last lap but as we can see from oh, as I can tell you from their best lap in the session Takac looking to be around five to six tenths quicker than Ibrahim Okiai as now Eric Brilladori does the fastest lap of the TCR European Endurance Race with a 1 minute 45.4110 showing his speed gaining quite a bit of time on Ibrahim Okiai 149.5 from the Turkish driver whereas Takac now over the line in a 1 minute 50.8 with the Cupra car having some issues in qualifying but bravely getting to the start of the race they did an amazing effort to fix the little damage that unfortunately prevented them from completing a single lap in qualifying. They had to start from the bottom of the grid, but making some great inroads to fight for a podium place. And of course, the DSG win with Ibrahim Okiai currently in that spot. But of course, we still have another 60 minutes of racing tomorrow at 10.20 a.m. local time to try and decide who the winner will be. Now with the Cupra car of Balaz Takac trying to get back out there and try and gain some time. And here you can see Eric Brilladori trying to go for it and build as big of a gap as possible to show that not only he is the fastest driver of them all but that the number two crew deserves to be in front after this first stage. The Italian now setting another fastest lap of the race in a 1 minute 45 flat. Whereas Takac is trying to gain some time on Okiai. At the moment, the Turk holding down the fort in second position with the Cupra now crossing the start finish line. Doesn't look like Takac has the pace to gain some time over Okiai, who's doing a brilliant job to hold off second position. Whereas the number 60 car is struggling to make some inroads and catch their rivals. Eric Brigadori is still out in front with 10 minutes on the dot to go as of right now. With the number 2 car trying to build up a nice gap. Now 11.9 seconds over Ibrahim Okiai. A really brave effort from the DSG driver, however, who is also fighting for the gentleman category. Of course, we have three general classes, the overall trophy, the DSG trophy, which is reserved to cars with a DSG gearbox, and then the TCR Gen 1, which is reserved to cars that have received no updates since 2018, as per the technical notification released by the WSC, with now the number four car trying to hold down second place and the lead in the DSG class but as we were talking about we have three other trophies the ladies trophy of course reserved to female drivers with Siddha Kachan now leading that standing the gentleman class with drivers of 50 years of age or more allowed to race in that class and of course we have Kachan's teammate Ibrahim Okiai currently leading in the number four car and then the junior category for drivers under 21 years of age we had Zekai Ozen ready to start his adventure in the TCR European Endurance in the number 3 car, the Audi RS3 LMS TCR from Texaco Team AMS, but unfortunately a mistake by Barkin Pinar resulted in a DNF in this first part of the race for the number 3 car and now Ozen will be eager to get back behind the wheel and actually get back get behind the wheel for the first time in a race aspect tomorrow at 10.20 a.m. for stage 2. 8 minutes and 15 seconds to go with Eric Brilladori still leading the white, red and orange Texaco Team AMS car who took the outright pole position 
in qualifying yesterday. Thank you, Daniele. Here we are with Mauricio Slaviero, the promoter of the TCR uh, European Endurance. Uh, in the pit lane, uh, a race that gives us safety car, red flag, overtakes and strategy. Yeah, yeah, it was very... A lot of things happened at the same time, so I think it was, let's say, a very... A lot of actions to, a lot of action to start the first race of our life, let's say, of our first championship, so it's, it's, it's nice. It's a first little step, but we have seen an emotional restart, quite intensely fight, so, I mean, the aim was to give something fun to see, and I think you did this target. Yeah, yeah, that's the aim. The aim is to give another opportunity, a different opportunity for the TCR teams, for the TCR drivers, you know, to have an endurance race. That's what we are, we are achieving now, and let's move forward, let's go for the next races, and I'm sure that the championship will be an success, a, very, a very big success, success until the end of the year. Thank you so much, Mauricio. I'll let you thank come you. back watching the race. To you, Daniele. Thank you so much, Antonio. And thank you to Mauricio Slaviero for his kind words. Of course, the promoter of the series that starts off here in Balaton, its 2024 adventure. Now, with the cameras on the number four car, the leader in the DSG class with Ibrahim Okiai behind the wheel, the 54-year-old with huge experience in Turkish racing, 10 Turkish titles and, of course, experience in the FIA WTCC, the World Touring Car Cup, where he raced for a full season in 2008, of course, made his debut in 2006 and then raced in 2011 with a BMW 320SI, so a driver with a lot of TCR experience and, of course, bringing a lot to the table for Texaco team AMS, who swept qualifying yesterday with a 1-2-3 that saw their cars being the class of the field, of both fields, actually, in both the overall and the DSG class, with Brigadori and Konukoglu taking the outright pole position and now leading the race. 5 minutes and 54 seconds to go in the lovely Balaton Park circuit, a track long 4,115 meters, a track that was recently opened actually back in May of last year, so less than a year of activity for a already hugely successful track with the latest GPS technologies, 48 pick garages and two additional support paddock areas that sees Balaton become one of the most popular tracks in the Middle East, in sorry, in the Eastern Europe scene and of course Balaton being a new track. There are a lot of series interested to race here. TCR European Endurance being one of them and choosing the Hungarian racetrack as its first outing with stage one now close to the end. Five minutes and five seconds to go with the number four car currently trying to catch the leader Eric Priadori. In TCR, how was this first part of the race? I guess even the first time in Balaton for you. So how was the track and that was your first part of the race? Uh, this is my first time that I'm racing in endurance format, so it, it's totally new format, totally new track, uh, and the feeling was good because uh, I guess the track is so funny. Uh, you, you you do really enjoy each corner. Uh, it has long straights, sharp corners, etc. So I do enjoy the track. I do enjoy the uh, endurance racing. Uh, I hope uh, I, I'm honored to be a famous in the T server, but I hope I won't be a famous and I. I hope I can see lots of women in this series as well. It will be the next step. Today we got uh, safety car, uh, red flags, yeah. restart, overtakes, strategy. So everything together since the first race. Uh, yeah, uh, I saw everything at once. So I can say that it was a really uh, educating <laughs> race, let's say. Uh, it, at the start, I made a little mistake. For example, I thought start is gonna, uh, you know, rest uh, we are gonna restart. I just a little bit slowed down, but and then I figured out that uh, race is going on. So every little thing is a, a experience experience right now for me. Oh, for example, this one. There is some attendance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they wanted to join our interview. <laughs> uh, I hope uh, we will uh, be competitive in this series. Uh, we competitive with our uh, Audi cars. Uh, let's see uh, what will happen in Valadinga next. And also tomorrow. Yeah, we have tomorrow. Uh, I hope uh, we, we can see uh, more car uh, in the endurance series, so it can be more competitive. <laughs> Definitely will. To you, Daniele.
Thank you so much, Antonio, and thank you to Seda Kachan for her kind words. Of course, the leader of the ladies' class, not only today, but in the championship as well so far. And the Turk has become a driving force for female racing in Turkey, but in the TCR scene as well. Of course, tw uh, 31 years of age and second in the 2023 Turkish Championship. She made her international debut last year in the TCR Italy around Imola. A very interesting driver to follow closely. And of course, now in second place together with her teammate Ibrahim Okiai in the Audi RS3 LMS DC DSG car currently the number four car in second position but here we can see Eric Prigliadori whose words we heard actually before the start of the race of course him being a very competitive driver and making a great pair together with Turgut Konukoglu trying so far to lead the race and successfully doing so in the first 58 minutes of racing we still have two minutes and 17 seconds to go before the pause that will see the race resume tomorrow morning at 10 20 a.m. local time through the chicane goes Ibrahim Okiai now towards turn 10 in a very technical second part of the track with as Kachan said before a complete track and a very fun track to drive on for drivers of course long straights sharp corners and hard braking zones like the one into turn one that Eric Brigliadori was now hitting and now we can see the number four car getting towards the final part of the track turns 12 and 13 and now the long sweeping double left hand corners of turns 14 and 15 before the final turn the number 16 before the start finish line with now one minute and 22 left on the clock as we saw in the background the Zillian Motorsport car the Cupra of Zoltan Barkovic and his teammate currently behind the wheel Balaj Takac with the Hungarian trying desperately to close things up with Okiai unfortunately failing to do so in the first stage of the race but of course we have tomorrow and another 60 minutes of special and outstanding images from Balaton Park circuit as the number two car is now likely getting through turn 10 for the second to last time today as the number three number two car sorry is trying to hold down the fort fortunately the number three car wasn't able to finish this first part of the race with Pinar and Ozen forced to get out of the car after the former made a little mistake in the final corner Final corner, the Brigliadori is about to hit. Now turn 15, here is turn 16 to start. Yet another lap will be lap number 25 with Brigliadori now towards the first right-hand corner along the 4.1 meter long track, 4.1 kilometer, sorry, long track here in Balaton Park circuit as the clock hits zero. And we are therefore ready to close things up here with Eric Brigliadori currently in the lead together with his teammate Turgut Konukoglu who was able to hold down P3 at the time in the first part of the race and then after the pit stop phase getting back to the lead of this first part of the opening round of the TCR European Endurance 2024 here is Brigliadori trying to get as quickly as possible to the finish line leaving nothing but breadcrumbs to his rivals with the fastest lap of the race set by the Italian with a 1 minute 44.805 almost 3 seconds quicker than the Cupra car of Batan Takac who is trying his hardest to gain some time over Ibrahim Okiai but the Turk doing a great job to hold down not only P2 but of course the first position for the DSG class. Here is Eric Brigliadori ready to get towards the final sector of the track now hitting the chicane lovely entry for Brigliadori who is now rounding out the final two corners as the Italian will now start what looks to be the final lap of today with Brigliadori 
now breaking towards turn one it's a very difficult corner actually the opening turn of the track this short and sharp right hand corner then then flows very nicely towards turns two three and four which then leads to the back straight where we saw many of the fans actually turning around from the main grandstand here they are to try and look for the cars on the back straight of this lovely new track here in Hungary with the Balaton Park circuit hosting the opening round of the TCR European Endurance. Biliadori now hitting the first of the two ever so important braking zones in the second sector. Turn five then leads towards this fast flowing part towards one of the two chicanes here on the track. Turns eight and nine. You see Biliadori braking perfectly once again as he did throughout the whole weekend really. A perfect job for the number two car especially here on Saturday now the hairpin that leads Briadori towards the final sector of the race actually of the first stage with the race being decided tomorrow after another 60 minutes of exciting battles here in the TCR European Endurance Championship with its maiden season starting here in Balaton Briadori now handling his car perfectly towards the final three corners of this this first stage of the opening round of the TCR European Endurance as Briadori will now see the flag that indicates the end of stage one and Briadori is then the race leader after the first day of racing here in Balaton with Ibrahim Okiai likely to follow closely behind in second position and of course as the leader of the DSG class with Ibrahim Okiai and of course let's not forget the lovely work by Seda Kachan in the first part of the race here is the Turkish pair of Okiai and Kachan with the four men now in the car the number four coming round the final couple of corners to take the flag and of course consolidate their DSG lead here they are taking the flag of this first part of the race and then we will see the Cupra come out of the final corner with Balaj Takac in the car here it is the lovely Red Bull livery car of the Hungarian team in the home race currently third in the overall standings and second in the DSG class of course the race is not over yet we will have another hour of racing tomorrow starting at 10 20 a.m. with of course local time with another 60 minutes of exciting images here from Balaton Park. Briadori now ready to bring his car back to the pits. Lovely work from the Italian with the Turkish team here in part one of the opening round of the TCR European Endurance from Balaton Park. Of course, Briadori will try and do the same tomorrow with the car responding really well to him and of course his teammate here are the highlights of the race with the TCR Eastern Europe joining the TCR European Endurance guys for the first 25 minutes of racing lovely overtakes a couple of safety cars even a red flag and some incredible strategy work from all cars here out on track today and here is the reason of the red flag an incident between two cars of the TCR Eastern Europe with the number 74 of Zarko Knego and David Kajaya in the Meta Motorsport car with the race restarting after a brief period under red flag conditions with the TCR Eastern Europe guys fighting it out right to the line with a last minute move, a last second move actually from some of them to try and improve their 